So today we are going to take a variable resistance and having a very nice and friendly display on the terminal using Python. So we will see together the steps of doing this, going through the STM32F1 and then through the Python. So if you are interested to see how this works, just follow this video. So well within this video you will learn how to quickly set up the ADC library for the STM32F1 and use Python to make the communication with the computer also having a handy display. So as usual the code that we are going to share today is available on GitHub and 50% of the code that we will be presenting will be in C language, the program to code will be CAL, the other 50% of course will be Python and the editor will be VS Code. Finally the lever here is a quite beginner as you just have to copy paste the code and understand what the functions are doing. So today's example is based on the tutorial that we have made in the previous uh, videos and the first one is the analog to digital converter for the ADC library and the one for the Python is how to make the data acquisition using Python and with the threading. So if you're more interested to know the details and how these libraries are working, I quite advise you to take a look on it and I added the link in the description. So the hardware that we are going to use, of course, as usually the STM32F1 uh, based microcontroller and or what we call the AKA blue pill for the board. Also, we are going to use this FTDI, the FT232, to allow the UART communication or the serial communication between the STM32F1 and the computer. Finally, a variable resistance or a potentiometer to play with the display and to see how our ADC is responding to the change. Okay, so let's have a quick review on the circuit and understand um, how we are going to use it. So first of all, we will have the microcontroller and connect the potentiometer, the one, the pin in the middle, with the pin um, A0 or the port A pin number 0. So this is to connect with that specific ADC. And we are going to use the microcontroller with the FTDI to connect with the PC where we are going to use Python to connect with the serial communication. So in this example, because we are using the STM32F1, we will need the FTDI. But if you do have another microcontroller and you successfully could send some data through UART, you will don't need the FTDI. So finally, and very important, the message that we are going to send, the UART message will be the measure that we are going to get and the slash and or the new line, okay? So let's jump and go to the next step where we are going to understand what the program, the Python program we're going to do. So we will have two threads. So we are going to use threading and this parallel thing. So the first or the secondary thread, the one that will be running in the background between codes, of course. So it will be reading the data from the serial communication, making the data averaging or giving a more accurate data because the um, the ADC for the STM32F1 is 12-bit, which is a quite huge, but the variability is big. So we are going to average that data. Also, we are going to display data on the terminal and have a display within a progress bar. So you will see later on, it's a little bit beautiful one just to have an understanding or more user-friendly picture. And within this one, we are going to use the module, the courses module, and the serial model. So as you can see, these are in yellow color because if you are going to use Windows for courses, you will have to download the library using pip and serial is also a different library that you have to download too. So we are going to use threading, which is a main library of Python. And the main thread will be just managing, managing the user, which is just quit the program for our simple task and also managing the interrupt for the serial threading if we do have an issue. And here we are going to use this three library curses signal and system. Okay, so now that we had an introduction about how the circuit works and how our Python works, let's jump and take a look to the code. Yeah, guys, as usual, if you enjoy this content and like to support it, just subscribe and give us a thumbs up. 
Okay, so let's go to the code and let's start first of all with Kale and the C code that we are going to use. So as you can see, this is the whole the code that we will need. It's very simple and easy to use. So we are going to add these two libraries, the ADC library and the message drive library. The ADC is a library that will get the data from initialize and get the data from the, the ADC and the message li message drive is the, the a library that will uh, transform the um, data that we will get and send it in a proper way to the computer. So um, I also added here just all the pin that you can use as um, ADC pin for the STM32 F1 blue pill and also the STM32 F1 in general and you can use two ADC. Okay, so you have the list here. So first of all, we are going to initialize the Sysdic, which is initializing the delay function. After that, we need to initialize the UART so we can send the data through UART2 um, to the um, using the board rate, the 115,200. And after that, we have to initialize also the ADC. And this is really a critical function. So what we are going to put here as input, so we can use ADC1 or ADC2 because the STM32F1 of the blue pill can use only two ADC. And here the pin, the port, actually port A and pin zero. Feel free to choose within the pins that I added here. So you can use all of them to read the data. So after that, we are going through the while loop and inside the while loop, we have to check each time if we have a reading or not. So when we do have a reading, when this one um, output is one, we can or a true, we can read the data. And this is how we read the data from the ADC. So we have the ADC read and we get the value. So it's quite simple. We put here the ADC P, A and zero. And after that, so you see also just for you guys as a warning for the ADC here, you need to be sure that it's ADC1, ADC1. If you are going to use ADC2, you can use ADC2, but careful to be to put two here and two here, whatever the other pin. Okay, so we read the data and then we send it through UART. So let's visualize the data in a simple way using the a classic H term that we use. So let's connect and let me uh, show you oh, I didn't load the data okay we should be good and we start receiving so let me also show you the circuit it's important so we understand it so this is our circuit here the STM 32F1 connected with the uh, FTDI to have the uh, communication with the computer and this is the potentiometer so still here it's quite a very messy visualization not easy to watch so let's add this one so we will separate by new line and the output just for idea for you guys is from 0 to 1000 even it's a 12 um, bit um, ADC I'm using from 0 to, to, to 1000 which is more than enough for a lot of applications so let me show you when I do the variation here when I will be doing the variation here. So I'm increasing here, the uh, decreasing the uh, value of the resistance. You can see I am almost 1000. And if I go back here to the maximum value of the resistance, we are at zero volt. So this is just the picture. And you can see sometimes it's a, a little bit hard to read if there's a change and some, you see it's a little bit variable. Okay, and then comes the idea to add Python to the story and read the data. So this is our program here. So I will start from the end and go. So the main program starts with a signal dot signal and signal int. And this is where we're going to use a single signal, sorry, to manage the interrupt uh, of the um, threading. And we will go later on. But our main program starts with three main functions first one we are going to initialize the cursors means the the one that will manage the screen and the display then the serial threading we are going to run our serial in, in within infinite loop finally we will have a main thread managed within this function so let's go one by one so for the cursors, first of all, we are going to initialize the cursors and saying to the Python, we are going to use the cursors library. After that, we are going to set up some stuff for the user interaction, refresh it, and 
And this is the part where we set up the color here that we are going to use to build the bar. Okay, that's the first part to initialize the cursors. After that, we do have the serial threading. Serial threading is here, and this is the one that just run the threading of the function myserial. So this is the function myserial, and inside it, we do have few stuff. So first of all, we do have this global one, UART and screen. Screen is the one that we initialized previously here, so we can use this variable inside the main loop. And UART we will see it later on. So we do have the COM3 and also the port and everything. And this is for the average and sampling, and we will understand. So first of all, we are going to read the data using sir.readline. And if we do have like greater than, so and the read line, that's, a, that's an important one. This is connected directly with um, the message that we are going to build here because it's end with a slash n means a new line. So we will re be reading the message each time at the end with a slash n. Good. So we will try to do so first we are going to get the data and transform it to an integer because we just send a number or a, a, cha a character or an array of characters that will be converted to a number and we will be keep um, averaging or accumulating the data on the average and checking the sample and here we put sampling equal 50 so if we gather it 50 sample then we will start the display so we will put our display here and we will show that we can how many millivolt is it so and we will put we will multiply the 1000 by 3.3 and that will give us how many millivolt there we will have and also we will show that the percentage of our, our or the ratio that we are of our uh, potentiometer and then this is just for the display and that's all this is so this is what will generate the um, how say scrolling bar that we are going to use. So this is the whole the main thread, and you can see here while UART, and UART is a global function. So this global function is connected directly with the main thread here, which will be running also in a while. But it will be a waiting thread. It will not be an infinite loop. It will be a loop waiting for the user to input a key. So if the key is equal to Q, which is quit, then UART will be false, false, and this false will go to here and stop this thread. Then we can quit without any issue. But the problem, if we, we do have an interrupt or something happening in the main program, one of the risks is this thread, the secondary thread, will be running and keep running. So that's why we are putting this function for the interrupt. So by doing so, if we do have an interrupt or something, this signal handler will go here and put a system exit. So it will clean like everything within the program and not putting any mess and there is no thread that will keep running. Okay, so we, we have done everything now. So let's take a look to this program and what will be the result. So first of all, we have to disconnect and let's open okay and here we are so this is how many millivolt we are reading and it's almost 54 percent of our uh, thread so our, our like total uh, volume so by moving the potentiometer you can see that the cursors library thanks to the cursors library i can create kind of a bar that show me the progress i can see the millivolt and everything so i don't waste the microcontroller energy and power to to do this computation i'm more giving it to the computer which the computation power is infinite compared to okay so that was a very short and quick tutorial i hope you enjoy it and we'll